All right. Now, this is a, there's a program called FastQC. It's a Java program, so you can pretty much run it on any Mac or PC. Uh, you can just download it, double click on it. Uh, it has your sort of standard in interface. There's a file menu. You can open up a FastQ file. It will read it in, and it will give you uh, some nice and interesting statistics. Um, you can also run it from the uh, command line on Unix. Um, and its save format is basically a web page. So it has a bunch of little charts and stuff. And I will show you some examples of this uh, in just a moment. Um, there are several plots. I mean, there's a lot of plots that are useful. These are the ones I consider the most useful. Um, and you'll see them in just a moment. Um, the first two are really good at telling you if you have generally good reads or if uh, your reads are generally crappy or if it just happens to be a subpopulations of reads that have been drawing your sort of average values down. Um, and then it, a lot of the later metrics that you, you will find in, um, in the FASTQC output are more for sort of diagnostic. Like if, you're, if your quality is pretty good, you probably don't care as much for the rest of the information. But if they're kind of crappy, some of the later uh, graphs within the FASTQC uh, output will be of interest to you to try to sort of do some troubleshooting. Um, and I'll, I'll go over a little bit about the warnings and stuff when I actually show you this stuff. So here we go. All right. So here is the output. Uh, there's a little index on the side that this is each of the sort of graphs you can see. And um, like I was saying, these to sort of check the X and the, and the bang, they're all there to tell you whether it thinks the statistic is good, it's uh, iffy, or it's bad with the red X. Uh, but you should take the, all those with a grain of salt, because FASTQC is a fairly simplistic program. And it, in some cases, is not really designed for the level of sequencing that we do now. Um, and so some of this is, it requires just sort of your own sort of evaluation, looking at the graph and deciding your particular organism or your particular experiment, especially if you've done something like just PCR'd up some amplicons. Uh, FASTQC may think it's bad, but like I said, it has a very simple model of what it thinks is good. Um, you'll see up here, it has some uh, sort of basic things. It'll tell you how many sequences. Uh, this first file I'm going to show you is, is from E. coli. It's sort of been somewhat pre-vetted, uh, so you'll see a lot of these numbers are kind of nice and even. Uh, it's like exactly. Five, five million sequences? Yes. Um, all the sequences are linked 100. And it's got 50% GC content. Now this first graph over here, maybe a bit big for this screen. But what you see here, here along the y-axis are the quality scores. So you can see in general, a lot of quality of scores, especially at the beginning, very good, and they start to get worse. Now, this particular graph um, is not what you're going to see every time, but this is somewhat uh, indicative of Illumina data in that, as I explained on Tuesday, um, the longer the Illumina system sequences, uh, crappier the data quality gets. Um, what you'll also notice, and there might be an example of this in the next two that I show, is that often in these first few base pairs, there's actually a lower quality as well. And there's sort of various reasons for that. Um, but you don't see them here. Um, at the bottom here, you can see uh, what the actual index value into your read. So if you're a 100 base pair read, this first column here is your first base pair. Now, it's somewhat condensed in that you get sort of detailed information in the first 10. And then it starts summarizing past that. Um, part of the reason is that these first 10 base pairs, like I said, can sometimes be a bit funky. So people kind of like to look at them in detail. And uh, the later ones are obviously much more funky because you can see the range on some of these is really quite crappy. And this orange band here is basically under 30, 28 and under. Uh, but the details of it are not as important just because people know at the end of sequence, generally times to get a little bit crappy. Um, now this graph 
is not per base pair. So the first one was uh, statistics over the very first base pair in all possible reads, second base pair. This is per the entire read. What is the average score of an entire read? Uh, and you can see here that the vast majority of reads, their average score is between 35 and 38. That's great. Um, this is generally what you hope to see when you get uh, your data back. Um, here there is a distribution of the different um, different base pairs, each in a different color. Um, this doesn't show it as well, but this is kind of mild, but often you, uh, the sort of squiggliness that you see in the beginning is actually a lot more exacerbated uh, in a lot of samples. And this has to do with the fact that, uh, in theory, um, the random priming that gets your read fragments attached to the Illumina adapters is supposed to be random. But it is not entirely random. And it can also be an effect of sometimes getting uh, some of the adapter sequence sequenced. And that is not very random. So you'll see a little bit of, of jitter there that doesn't look good. Uh, in general, I think for the rest of this stuff, this is a 50-50 GC content, so you're not going to see much more than that bar. Um, there are these uh, theoretical GC distribution curves. Uh, blue is the theory. Red is the actual count. Um, it's never really been useful for anything I've done, but for some people it might be. Um, the end content should generally be flatlining like this. You shouldn't be getting too many ends. Um, in this case, since a bunch of 100 base pair reads from an Illumina machine. If you're dealing with Illumina data, it's almost always going to be whatever length that you sequence. So not really that important of a graph. Now, this is a graph that can be both useful and misleading. So sequence duplication levels is telling you how many times you had a piece of sequence and you have the exact duplicate of that sequence within the thing. Uh, this can be somewhat useful if uh, you had some sort of mistake in your experiment, and it turns out you've actually sort of very biasedly only sequenced a few parts of the whole thing of gene, um, of whatever your reference sample was. Now, the misleading part of this is due to memory requirements and the fact that this was written a while ago before our sequencing machines got quite as good as they are. It really only samples the first 200,000 reads. So you really have to take this graph with a grain of salt. If this grain of salt is telling you you have a lot of duplication levels, uh, it might be something to look into, but it's not a definitely bad thing. Yes? Ah, okay. Uh, I'll just scroll down here a bit. You'll see, so here at the bottom is the sequence duplication level. So this basically says there's only one copy of it. And uh, there'll probably be the next one that I show. Uh, so it can start to like arc up like this. All right. Um, if you've got a lot of stuff in the 10 plus, it's potentially bad. But like I said, it it does a limited polling of the thing. Um, these graphs are not going to be. I'll just. I will actually go over these, but in one of these other examples. Okay. So here's a different um, run from a different organism. I've actually forgotten what it is. But here you can see a slightly more typical curve up here, the qualities, I mean, they're still good, you know, 32 is good quality score. Um, but this is a little bit more typical of what you see with Illumina reads. It's a little bit worse in the beginning. There's a really nice period during the middle. And then you got a little bit of a fall off near the end. Um, and you can see here with some of these sort of very wide divergences in the box plots. In this case, you've got a few bad reads, but they're really kind of outliers. Um, this plot looks mostly the same. You've basically got a large population of good reads. Um, here, because up here again, your GC content is 46%. You can actually see the AT. Oops. Where did I go? You can see the AT lines and the GC lines separate a bit uh, due to the uh, uneven GC content. And you can still see again, it's a little bit wonky at the beginning. Uh, end content is fine. Length is obvious. Here you can see, in this case, 
It did find a few samples that were repeated quite often. And then, uh, okay, and then this stuff was all great. So, I believe this is my really crappy example. Crappy in the sense of now this came from my seek run. Um, you can see the beginning, slightly less good, a nice long period of good sequencing here, and then because this is an especially long long run, you can see down here, this is past base 150, uh, things really really kind of crap out. Um, so the end of these sequences not so good. Now here is where this per read graph might come in useful because you can see oh, I've got this population spike here who average around 20 to 22 quality score. That is some subpopulation of my reads. But I also have this population of reads which is up at our happy, you know, 36 to 38. Um, this is telling you you've got some good data in here and you've got some reads that were just poorly quality, right? It could be a, there could have been several parts of the flow cell because it's kind of stochastic that were really too highly densely clustered, and then there's a bunch of others that were just right clustered. And we'll go over how to deal with this uh, next. Uh, because this data is a little bit more wonky, you can see that the distribution of the base pairs got really funky. Um, come down here. Um, there's no overrepresented sequences, but it also does this thing where it does some basic Kamer counting. Uh, generally, five MERS. Uh, depending on what system you're working with, if you know that your particular organism or whatever part of the genome tends to have a lot of uh, similar uh, sequences or repeats, uh, this can help you just sort of look through to see what's going on here. In this case, a lot of this craziness, as you see it, happening later in the read probably just has to do with the fact the read quality is really dropping near the end. Um, and it gives you a sort of summary table of all the um, uh, five MERS that it finds. Under overrepresented sequences, it will show you sort of longer uh, reads that happen quite often. Uh, FastQC has a little um, database of things like Illumina primers. So sometimes you'll see something that, you know, oh, 10 percent of your reads are overrepresented and they happen to match the Luma primers. So that means uh, either you sequenced over the back end of your read or the sequencing started sort of early at the beginning of the, of the read. Um, so yeah, so this, this program, you can spend a lot of time just sort of staring at little things and pondering your data. 